Good morning, friends. Welcome to Christ Church. Uh, it's Pastor Ryan here and Jackie, and we are very blessed to invite you into our home again this morning for Church Online. Now, we are in the season of Advent, and this is the third Sunday now. We're getting closer and closer to Christmas, and so you're allowed to feel a little bit more excitement about that. Uh, this Sunday, the emphasis will be on joy, and we have the... Um, the blessing of having our bishop, Bishop Trevor Walters, joining us today to be uh, preaching for us. And so we're excited mm -hmm. for that. But we want to give you some information for December. Now that we have uh, the new info that we're waiting for from uh, Bonnie Henry and our provincial government, um, we have a sense of what's coming now uh, through the new year. And so it is looking very much like we will continue online. They're asking us to um, to refrain from gathering until January 8th, I believe, and then they will reassess our numbers then. So uh, the things that we want to inform you about are December 16th, which is this Wednesday, I believe. Um, we are going to have our community carol sing online. And so you, if you've been with us for some time, you know the last number of years we've hosted a community event as a church to get together, eat snacks, sing carols, um, enjoy time together. But we obviously won't be able to do that in person, but we're going to do that online. So you can start baking, get some snacks together mm -hmm. for that. Um, and in the comfort of your own home, uh, Susan Schleppi and Rosalind and Patty Patstone and others are involved in putting together that night for us. So please invite your friends and family to participate in that, mm -hmm. um, to gather around with some warm drinks mm -hmm. and uh, and to sing Christmas carols together will be a fun time. Mm -hmm. And then also Christmas Eve. So we can't go anywhere. <laughs> we can't, you know, we're in our homes, which Jesus meets us there, but we wanted to invite you to do it with us online. We are gonna do our Christmas Eve as a family and we wanna welcome you. We wanna welcome you to come do Christmas Eve with us online um, and participate in that. It'll be a fun time of um, just gathering as if at home. And mm -hmm. I know it'll be a TV, but our hearts are with you and for you. We'd love to have you and whoever doesn't have family to gather or can't, um, just come with us online, that'd be great. So if you're feeling like, I can't believe I'm gonna spend Christmas Eve alone, you need to hear us. This is mm -hmm. our invitation to say, come be a part of our family with us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gonna be odd and it's gonna be difficult in, mm -hmm. in moments, but we want you to come gather around our tree as we tell the story of Jesus, mm -hmm. as our kids are in their jammies. And, <laughs> and so what we're gonna do for Christmas Eve is we're going to do lessons and carols. So we will go through nine scripture readings detailing the story of Jesus is coming, and we'll sing nine beautiful carols together mm -hmm. um, as we bring in the day of celebration on December 25th. So mm -hmm. December 24th, uh, Christmas Eve will be posted online for you to join us, mm -hmm. and we would love for you to be with us. And then the last thing is December 27th, which is the Sunday after Christmas, we are going to do church with Church of Our Lord, which mm -hmm. is a Anglican network church in Victoria, right downtown. You would have heard from both uh, the pastors there, um, our Archdeacon Rob and Rob Zoe and Duncan Polson. And so we're going to be doing a joint service with them. And again, we will post that online for you to, to join us there. Mm -hmm. Okay? So... We have a plan, which is good, um, and we have some things to look forward to there, but we recognize this mm -hmm. isn't a whole lot of good news. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of grief and a lot of disappointment. Mm -hmm. And you're allowed to feel that, okay? The season of Advent is a, a time, especially for being honest about mm -hmm. those feelings. Mm -hmm about feeling like we are not in everything we long for right now. Mm -hmm. We're in suffering, we're in sorrow, we're in hardship. 
And this human life is full of that stuff, mm -hmm. injustices and heartache. And so that's where we want to begin our journey today, mm -hmm. is in the darkness, in the pain. And what we're doing is we're asking Jesus to come and lead us from the darkness into joy. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's going to feel quite far today. <laughs> How do we move from what we're in with this bad news into joy? But we'll begin today by lighting our next candle, the candle of joy. And as we do that, let's pray together and ask Jesus to do this miracle in us this morning, mm -hmm. leading us from darkness into the light of his joy. Mm -hmm. So let's pray together as you light your candle. Our King and Savior now draws near. O come, let us adore him. Lead your people out of darkness and into the light of joy. Now, our first scripture reading this morning is from the Old Testament, from the book of Isaiah, in the chapter 65 and beginning in verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is our story, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And so, Lord, we come today hearing this promise that this is the world that Jesus would create. This is the people that he has come to save and to deliver from the darkness of this world. That we would be glad and rejoice forever in that which he creates. And that you have heard us. Your word says, before we call, you will answer. While we are yet speaking, you will hear. And so we take a moment in the quietness of our own hearts to make known to you our needs, our distresses, our longings, the places that we tend to shut down to just keep working and going, now in the safety of your presence. In the presence of your strength, we can be weak. We can be needy. We can be broken. And we can be honest about what is missing and lacking in this world. And ask that you would come and fulfill these places. Save us from the darkness triumph over evil, mend our broken hearts. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. 
Come into our hearts today and fill our homes with reasons for joy in your presence. Amen.
126, a wonderful psalm of praise and thanksgiving after God's people had been restored after many years in exile. We say the psalm responsively. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who, he who goes, goes out, out weeping, weeping bearing, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. This is our story, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Oceanside. Just want to bless you this morning. Just want to call your hearts to worship. Leave all your burdens behind this morning. Let me pray for you and then we can worship. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this beautiful congregation of people, of hearts uh, so willing to come and meet you this morning, Father. We thank you, Father, for your presence so accessible through Jesus. Father, we thank you that even now in our homes or wherever it is that we're watching this, Lord, that your spirit is at work in us. We just pray, Lord, that you would come in and shift things around, Father. Remind us of your promises, God. Uh, speak to our hearts this morning as we worship you. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's do a little bit of a mashup to start for the season this morning.
become the fount of every blessing Tune my heart to sing thy grace The streams of mercy never ceasing I call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious song Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mountain fixed upon it The mount of thy unchanging love And here I raise mine Ebenezer Here then by thy help I'm come and I hope by thy good pleasure Safely to arrive at home Jesus saw me with a stranger Wandering from the fold of God He to rescue me from danger Interposed his precious Our greater debtor Lately I'm constrained to be Let thy goodness like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to thee Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it Prone to leave the God Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it Seal it for thy courts above Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it Prone to leave the God I love Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it Seal it for thy courts above Jesus, by faith, we welcome you into our hearts and homes today. Would your presence dwell richly in this place? That we want to leave a changed people today. We want our homes to be beacons of light. So begin with our hearts and begin with our minds and fill our bodies with your peace and your rest, that we would be stirred up to joy together. And so, Lord, we pray together this prayer, the Collect for the Week. O Lord Jesus Christ, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient toward the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found a people acceptable in your sight. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so our home, may it become the home of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Make your home in us, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, our New Testament reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, beginning in chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. This is the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city of Galilee, named Nazareth, 
to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will, bring a, he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, who is old in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it to be, be to me according to the word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise be, be to, to thee, thee, Lord Christ. Hello, I'm delighted to speak to you today in these challenging times. Uh, and the Word of God has always got great uh, comfort uh, because it provides examples of people who lived with challenging situations who were overcomers. And so that's the direction I'm going this morning. Uh, let's, uh, let's pray. Father, thank you that in every season, whether they're difficult seasons or comfortable seasons, you are the same God. And you're the God who provides all the resources to get through challenging times. And so we pray, Father, that uh, your word would again, in the season of Advent, bring hope and light and comfort. Uh, we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to ask you this question. Are you an influencer? Do you have influence? And then I will follow it up by saying, well, then if you answer yes, how, how do you have influence? How is that expressed? How, how does someone know you have influence? And then I want to go on and say, well, do you have influence for God? Are you influencing the world um, regarding who God is and what God says? Now, of course, if you uh, answer no to influencing people or, God, or, or the world for God, uh, then, then that represents uh, something of a, of a very serious issue. Because if you sense you don't have significance and worth, and that's why you don't have influence, um, you need to take a very serious look at that and, uh, and uh, go talk to someone pretty quickly. Now, uh, one of the reasons uh, 42 years ago I became a priest was so that I might have the possibility of having a greater influence uh, for God in the world. And that, of course, was, had to be discerned by uh, the church as well as myself. It couldn't just be my decision that I wanted to be an influence. Um, the church had to say, yes, we think you are called to be an influencer for God. So I wonder if I asked you to, to, to identify someone in the world who you think is an influencer, or in the history of the world who's been an influencer, and this is not Sunday school, so the answer is not de facto Jesus. You cannot use that as your answer. It has to be a person. Who would you say? Would it be a, a great uh, inventor or a scientist who discovered a vaccine or, or uh, a politician or a a military leader, or even a sports person. Um, of course, whatever you choose will tell you more about yourself. Um, it'll tell you about your, what you value in the world. Well, I'm going to suggest that um, 
the greatest influencer in the world is actually Mary, the mother of Jesus. Because she not only influences uh, generations to come, um, as she said herself, blessed uh, will I be called among nations from generation to generation. Um, but also Mary influences Jesus. Even uh, when he's uh, an adult, uh, she still can say at the wedding of Cana, um, Jesus, they need wine, help them. Uh, to which he says, well, my time has not yet come, and who wins that argument? It's the one with the influence, and that's uh, Mother Mary. Now, there are, of course, huge dangers uh, around um, wanting to hold Mary up uh, in a way that uh, Scripture doesn't let us. Um, but there are also ways in which we could put her down which Scripture does not let us. Um, I remember so well a conversation Didi had with the Roman Catholic priest, and uh, Didi was just coming into her life as an iconographer and was discovering that Mary was in uh, so many of the paintings. And... Um, and so she said to a Roman Catholic priest, uh, now tell me, what do you think of Mary? To which he said, well, probably a lot more than you do. And I think that means a lot to me, the story, because uh, I think that uh, Mary has not meant enough to me uh, as she should, given how scripture uh, regards her. So I want to suggest that Mary is an influencer because she models what it is to be a disciple of Jesus. She is uh, a wonderful example of what it is to be filled with the Spirit. Now, of course, uh, her womb was filled with the Spirit. She uh, gave birth uh, to something that would influence the world. Um, we are called to be filled with the Holy Spirit in our heart and to give birth to something that will influence the world. Her attitude uh, was that of a humble, obedient servant. Um, and uh, our attitude, if we're going to be those great influences, will need to be that humble, obedient servant of the Lord. So I think Mary, uh, to me, is in many ways, could be nominated as the most influential person on the earth. Um, well now, um, Elizabeth has a way of describing Mary's... Um, blessedness. Uh, in fact, Elizabeth gives her three designations of blessedness. Um, blessed are you amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. And blessed is the one who believes in the words spoken to her, that it might be fulfilled, um, that the words spoken to her might be fulfilled. So she is blessed um, amongst, uh, um, amongst women. Uh, the fruit of her womb is a, is a source of blessing. And then her faith, her faith to believe the word spoken to her um, and that it might be fulfilled uh, is another example of, of why Mary is blessed, according to Elizabeth. So the scripture is wanting to say Mary is the blessed Mary, um, she is deeply blessed. Um, but listen, the context of this, to the life of Mary and her calling is in the midst of a huge problem. Uh, she has a phenomenal challenge to overcome, and that's Joseph. Um, and uh, some of us um, are a huge challenge to our spouses. Um, and uh, we are a huge obstacle for them to overcome, uh, to be faithful in their Christian life. Um, but God can deal with the most stubborn man, uh, as it appears in the story of Mary. So what's the context? For those of you not absolutely familiar with this, um, Mary has, um, uh, is, 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 encountered by the angel Gabriel and the angel Gabriel says look Mary you're going to conceive and have a child and the and you will be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit and it will be the Holy Spirit that will 
um, produce this child within you. And then this child is going to uh, be born and he's going to do some incredible things. He is going to be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. Uh, and the Lord will give him the throne of his father David. And, the, and he will reign over the house of Judah and his kingdom will have no end. Well, how about hearing that tomorrow morning? Um, when you're engaged, uh, a virgin, and you have now to somehow to explain to your fiancé that um, you have become pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Um, but, you see, when God gives us a huge challenge in our life, he also provides... Um, a confirmation so that we might have some encouragement in trusting and believing the word spoken to us. And so what, what did God give, the Gabriel give to Mary that would give her some sense of, okay, I can confirm this is the word of God? Well, uh, he said to her, um, by the way, uh, your cousin Elizabeth, um, who lives in the hill country, is six months pregnant and uh, she's going to give birth to someone who will be very significant. And uh, as soon as Gabriel had departed the scene, Mary knew what she had to do. She had to race up to the hill country, find her cousin Elizabeth, and um, see if in fact she was six months pregnant. Now, if Gabriel had said to Mary, um, now, your uh, uh, Elizabeth is... Um, is three months pregnant. That would have been tough on Mary because she wouldn't, she'd have to hang around for three months waiting for the bump or, or a month or two after the three months, waiting for a bump to get the confirmation. But she had a bump to go to. She had evidence that would say Gabriel was telling the truth. Because the great part of this story, of course, is that Elizabeth has been infertile. She has that terrible description in the Old Testament of being barren. A uh, great source of disgrace uh, for uh, in those times. And uh, so um, this was, in fact, uh, uh, miraculous. It was um, a, a wonderful uh, thing for Elizabeth and uh, Mary could go and get comfort. Now, why, why, not, why not say, why not tell uh, Mary uh, your, your cousin is, um, is at nine months um, uh, why three months? Why six months? I think it was because those two women needed three months, because Mary stayed with her for three months. I think they needed three months to rehearse what they were going to say to Joseph and the family and how she was going to come to terms with giving birth to someone who would reign on the kingdom forever and ever and who would be called the Son of the Most High. I think those women needed time to rehearse. And with all the time to rehearse, when Mary gets home and tells Joseph, he, being a just man, seeks to put her away quietly and not make a fuss or, or make her shame her, uh, but is going to divorce her. That's his plan. Goes to sleep that night and um, Gabriel speaks to Joseph. Now, why do you think Gabriel spoke to Joseph in a dream and not as Mary during the day? I think because Joseph would have argued, and I think given the fact he was asleep, he uh, had to hear the whole message before he made a response. I think there may be some difference between men and women in that department, um, but maybe not. Um, and I could be absolutely wrong about why Gabriel was spoken to in the night, but I know he was, that's what scripture tells us. And so, uh, Mary, faced with the possibility of uh, being divorced, um, whether Joseph chose to shame her or not, her society would have done. And, uh, and nobody was likely to believe her explanation. But of course, if Joseph believes her explanation, then why shouldn't everybody else? I mean, he's the one who's most acutely... Uh, uh, impugned by this development uh, and so the mar wonderful events of Joseph 
getting to know of this um, through the angel are, are, uh, are spectacular. Now, um, I remember as early as the 70s, um, people dismissing the virgin birth, uh, wanting to say that um, the natural laws that govern the universe uh, can't be broken. So miracles have to be explained by natural circumstances. Now, and, and, and the, the problem they would say is that otherwise you've got a random universe. Um, well, I think that what we have in that statement is a false dichotomy. It's either random or there are natural laws. And if something is random, it must in some way break or disrupt natural laws uh, and, and end natural laws. Well, I think that that would be true if science, the science that governs natural laws, is God. Then, of course, everything has, that's the ultimate order. But if there's a universe outside of, let's say, the Earth, then you can have gravity present in the, in the Earth, but not present in another universe outside of the, the Earth's atmosphere. For instance, if you create a computer program and you're the creator of the program, you can turn off that program for a moment and you can do some changes to the program and then you can turn it back on again. Now, the fact that there have been changes in the program, does that mean that that program is now subject to random changes? Well, they weren't random. They were changed by the programmer. And the programmer can stop the program, interfere with it in whatever they want, and then let it run again. Um, so if God is the God of the universe, uh, miracles which disrupt natural order can take place without natural order being random. And so I despair over um, even the, some of the finest commentators in history have wanted to explain away some miracles. I mean, the classic one is the Reed Sea, the Red Sea, when, uh, when Moses and all the army went through the sea. And it wasn't a miracle that God moved back the waters, but it was this wind that uh, happens once a century in that part of uh, the, the, town, uh, the, the universe. And it was the wind that dried out the, the riverbed. And uh, except, I, I'm sorry, but I mean, uh, maybe that in that particular instance, maybe that did happen, but then you've got numerous other miracles. Uh, what happened with the disciples walking on water, uh, with Jesus walking on water, um, and uh, Peter staying up on the water when he had faith and sinking when he didn't? Um, what do you do with all of those miracles? Um, you have a God who is able to... to stop natural order to go to heaven's order and heaven's order is uh, is beyond anything we could ask or imagine so the danger is to put mary up too high uh, and make her the queen of heaven and uh, have to pray to mary uh, to, to get her to influence jesus uh, as much as she's the great influencer that's not biblical influence uh, the Bible does not grant Mary that status to influence Jesus in heaven on earth. Yes, and that's why she's blessed amongst all women, um, but not in heaven. And then the alternative is for us to um, either raise Mary up or, or lower down the miracle of the uh, conception uh, of Mary uh, down to a natural event. Um, so what do we find to take away from this in Mary's life. She had an immense challenge to deal with. How do I uh, allow the word that's been spoken in my life that seems so improbable, how can I believe it and see it fulfilled in my life, knowing it's going to disrupt the people around me, for instance? And how do I trust God to take care of them? Um, and the answer is, if God spoke that word to, to you, 
he will speak that word to them or make it possible for them to be able to um, uh, receive that word in, in whatever God's purposes are. And uh, we, there are no limits to what God can do. I think that's what comes out of the story. There's no limit on what God can do in a person's life. If they have the qualities of a Mary, which are to be um, humble and obedient uh, and wanting uh, to do what she said in those remarkable words, be it unto me as you would have it. And so during this Advent season, I would say to you, let's all of us say to God daily, be it unto me today as you will have it. Uh, here I am, fill me with your spirit and uh, use me to be an influencer for the kingdom of heaven. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Well, it's such a gift to be able to hear from our bishop today. Mm -hmm. And what a beautiful text of scripture to look at the faith of Mary to receive Jesus. I love that phrase, be it unto me. Mm. That pulling in of faith that goes, I will trust your plan. I'll trust your power. Mm. I'll trust your will. Enough to just say, be it, let it be so about me mm. and about my heart and about my family and about my life. Let it happen here. Mm. And so I would encourage all of us that when we think of joy, and we're looking at our situations around us in the pandemic. Joy doesn't seem possible. Mm. But we're believing that joy comes as a fruit from Jesus. Mm. That he accomplishes it. That he does it. That he fulfills the heart in a way that nothing else in this world can do. Mm. And just by believing that joy is possible in Jesus... It gives us eyes to see it and to participate in it. Mm. And so I think it gives us the opportunity for gratitude, to be looking for reasons to be joyful. Mm. And to, to be looking to the future of what Jesus is going to create for the good of the whole world. That it would create in us anticipation. Mm. That we would look at Christmas and see that it promises us the presence of God and our Savior in Jesus in this now. Mm. And so it should stir our hearts to faith and to joy. Mm. So let's take a moment now to do our intercessions and to pray for the needs of those around us. Will you pray with me, please? O oh God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have, have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. us. O God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. O God the Holy Spirit, Sanctifier of the faithful, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. O Holy, Blessed, and Glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Lord God, we pray for our neighbors in Oceanside. Stir their hearts to seek you, that they might feel their way towards you and find you. Lord, hear Lord. our prayer. Lord God, we pray for Christ Church Oceanside. Prepare our hearts to receive your love, that we would bear fresh witness to your salvation. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those we know who are afflicted both in body or in mind, praying for healing, patience, and particularly where the stress of our circumstances during this pandemic is taking such an emotional toll. Make our wills eager to love and serve those who suffer among us and anoint our hands to heal in your name. Lord, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for all those working in the front lines of our health care system, praying that they may receive strength and encouragement while dealing with the major challenges they face each day. 
Make our voices one with all your people in heaven and on earth. And, and hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We lay at your feet our schedules, passions, and priorities in this season of waiting upon you. Kindle in our hearts a desperation to be with you in prayer, keen eyes to gaze upon you in scripture, a spiritual hunger to feed on your grace at your table, and a burning desire to serve you in the poor. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Amen. Amen. to be with you guys today and we want to remind you just again of December we have the advent calendar going so remember to pray for your 10 remember to engage in the fun activities and praying for yourself to receive that this week is joy yeah. receive the joy to your heart and then also just a reminder please come and join us on the 16th for the carol sing and for Christmas Eve we'd love to have you guys come join our house so now we will end our time today with a blessing um, please know that our hearts are very much with you. Mm -hmm. We are thinking of you often um, and praying for you. Our list of 10 is bigger than 10. <laughs> yeah. but, um, but it's our joy to be praying for you, okay? Yeah. So let me bless you and send you into another week of Advent as we look forward mm -hmm. to the coming of Christ in Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I bless you now with the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit to fill your hearts and your minds and your bodies and your homes and your neighborhoods mm -hmm. with the good news of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have a great week, everyone, and we will see you on Wednesday the 16th for the Community Carol Sing. Mm -hmm.